Hello, this is Philip and Philip, and we are here to unleash your talents. I think for this session we need an icebreaker. Let's speak about icebreakers. If you head into negotiation, maybe you don't want to dive directly into the critical part, where very often you're speaking about numbers, about a price, that sort of thing. So be sure before you do that to also spend some time to chat about other things. Now this of course has a big cultural background, so you need to be sure to which extent you can speak about private topics, if there's possibly some taboo topics, because these obviously you need to be a bit careful to apply. Typically for your own culture I would say you know quite well what you can speak about and what you shouldn't. Now how do you engage into this sort of discussion? Well, very simple thing is, how about asking? Or if a person doesn't want to open up, well, how about telling something out of your private life? Like yesterday, I built together furniture and I can tell you my back hurts from it. Then the other person probably also experienced something like that in the past and you can already chat about that. Then the question is, how long, how much time do you spend on this? Do you talk about this for hours? Do you just do some very short chit chat? Again, depends probably on your cultural background. And the typical icebreaker is the weather. Is that really the thing you want to speak about every single time? So I would say the weather is like the last resort. <laughs> <clears throat> the very last resort. Uh, but, and there is a big, very important exception here, uh, whatever you're talking about in your icebreaker, in order to create some, some, some common understanding, some common ground with your, with your opposite, make sure that when you listen to them, that you very carefully listen to what they're actually saying. So in case you're talking about the weather as a common, to create a common ground and as an icebreaker, watch for the changes when you, when you start talking about things. It's easier when you talk about private stuff because private stuff obviously has more emotional triggers. Talking about the weather uh, 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 might be boring, but then again you could have uh, you could have a comeback like, all right, so I see. Mm, how about we agree that weather is a really bad icebreaker, right? <laughs> it's quite likely that people will at least chuckle at this. So make sure up to observe your your opposites in order to know what kind of changes they have while they're listening. When they start shifting in their, in, in their emotions, when they start showing their emotions. Because this is key ingredient for a very, very interesting small part I'm going to talk about in a second. Now, which issue do we have if we have a negotiation on the phone? Well, obviously, we don't see any reactions. We can only hear reactions. And if somebody is not speaking, it's difficult to know what they're thinking or what they really want to express at the moment. Whereas looking at someone's face, hands and so on, the entire body language is extremely expressive. You can really find out a lot about what you want to say or what the other person wants to say without actually saying a word. So keep in mind, if you have a really difficult negotiation coming up, do you really want to do that on the phone? Do you maybe want to do that with a video conference? where you can really at least see the person better, or maybe even do a face-to-face -face conversation where you really have the full sensory channels. And that's, of course, where we're all coming from. This is how we used to communicate. And this is where we have the best understanding of what's happening in the minds of another person. So keep that in mind. What's the best setup for you? And that, of course, depends on the importance of what you want to negotiate. Precisely. And for, for, for the last big information chunk here, what I was already teasing before. <clears throat> Drum roll. <laughs> Very good. When you see this change of emotions, you have usually a physiologi physiological change in the body of your opposite. That means that the emotion has some kind of visibility on the body. And this is something that you can directly reference. <clears throat> Doesn't necessarily always mean that uh, it is a good label, like for instance, oh, you seem to be very angry. That one thing you can say, but be, be sure to be ready to receive an interesting, unexpected, maybe even weird answer. However, if you label those emotions, 
you will have a very, very easy time to get in touch with the other person. You seem like you're enjoying yourself. Absolutely. But I do have to point out here, if you're not an expert on this, if this is something that you're doing for the first time, be very careful with these provocative kind of things. It's better to just watch people and watch them very specifically and afterwards, maybe after the conversation, reflect on what you just experienced, what you noticed. And then, especially if it's always with the same person, you can start understanding, oh, actually, whenever he does this with his eyebrows, he's really skeptical, he doesn't believe what I'm saying, so maybe I should rephrase and make sure that he understands me. That's the kind of thing which you should test because it's better to crawl before you walk, before you run a marathon. And one last thing for today and for tonight, make sure to practice. <laughs> practice, relentlessly practice, because from practice comes proficiency and proficiency makes it easy. Because you always, you always fall to the highest level of your preparations and you never rise to the occasion. Because your preparation is what always keeps your back. So, this is it for this week. We are Philip and Philip and we are here to... Unleash your talent. Take care. Bye. See you.